Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing another API and microservice. We're starting the API and microservice certification section called MongoDB and Mongoose. This is for persistent data, meaning things when you write a web application, you want to be able to remember things that your members do. So let's get started. <clears throat> MongoDB is a database that stores data records or documents for use in, uh, by an application. Mongo is a non-relational, no SQL or SQL database. This means Mongo stores all associated data within one record instead of storing it across many preset tables as a SQL database. And so you call this SQL in the uh, industry. Some benefits of this storage model are, you've got scalability, so by default, non-relational databases are split or shared across many systems instead of only one. This makes it easier to improve performance at a lower cost. You've got flexibility, new data sets and properties can be added to a document without the need to make a new table for the data, <clears throat> replication, copies of the database run in parallel. So if one goes down, one of the copies becomes the new primary data source. Okay, so scalability, flexibility, and replication. Those all seem like great things. While there are many non-relational databases, Mongo uses use of JSON as its document storage structure makes it logical choice when learning backend JavaScript. Accessing documents and their properties is like accessing objects in JavaScript. <clears throat> Mongoose.js is an NPM or a Node Package Manager module for Node.js that allows you to write objects for Mongo as you would in JavaScript. This can make it easier to construct documents for storage in Mongo. Working on these challenges will involve you writing your code on REPL.IT on our starter project. After completing each challenge, you can copy your public REPL.IT URL to the homepage of your app into the challenge screen to test it. Optionally, you may choose to write your project on another platform, but it might be publicly visible, but it must be publicly visible for our testing. So we wanna start this project on a REPL.IT using this link. So I'm just gonna click this one, I'm gonna open it in a new link. Or we can close the GitHub repository. And because of the complexity of this one, I'm going to actually do this one in REPL.IT. Usually I I clone a GitHub link, uh, GitHub, and then I get it running in production. But I found that to be very challenging with this one because connecting Mongoose databases to a functioning web app is a whole function in itself. And for this, we just want to study the uh, Mongo and Mongoose attributes. So if you use REPL.IT to save the link, to save the link to your project somewhere safe. So there's just saying, remember to save these somewhere safe. So use MongoDB Atlas to host a free MongoDB instance for your projects. MongoDB Atlas is a specific software, and we'll check that out in a little bit. For the following challenges, we are going to start using MongoDB to store our data. To simplify the configuration, we are going to use MongoDB Atlas. MongoDB Atlas is a MongoDB data as a service platform, which basically means that they configure and host the database for you, making it so that the only responsibility you have is to populate your database with what matters, data. We are going to show you how to create a MongoDB Atlas account, create a new cluster, create a new user on the database, whitelist your IP address, and connect your cluster. So first we want to create a MongoDB Atlas account. So I'm going to open this in a new window as well. Once you open your MongoDB Atlas, you should sign up for a new account. Just click sign in button in the top right corner of the registration, register a new account. Okay, cool. So let's go here, sign in. Okay, so once you get inside, you should be able to click the clusters and there should be build a cluster. So here you've got your different options. We'll just start with a free option. Um, and then I'm just going to leave everything default, except for I'm going to rename this um, useful programmer um, practice. I'm going to say create cluster. All right, so now that we've got that started, let's go back to the instructions. Uh, create cluster button at the bottom of the screen and verify the image captions they provide. Verify the image captions they provide. You should now see your cluster is being created and new clusters take between seven to 10 minutes to provision. Wait until the cluster is created before going on to the next step. Okay, so as you can see, it's your cluster is being created, so we're just going to kind of wait here, and I'll just read forward a little bit so we can get an idea for what we're doing next. 
Uh, on the left side of the screen, you should see database access under the security to start creating a new user. Click add new database user. So on the left side of your screen, click database user. Database access. Security database access. Okay. Click add new database user button that is displayed in the next menu. Add new database user, and then over here, enter a new username and password. You can set privileges, read and write to any database if they are not already, and then click add user. Okay, so here we'll say authentication mode, password, read and write to any database, uh, useful programmer practice. Um, Okay, and I'm just gonna add the user. So this is the one that I just added. This one won't be there for you guys. Um, we can actually just delete this. Um, okay, cool. So now that we've got the database, enter a new username and password and read and write in the database if they're not already, and then click add user. Okay, so we already did that. We've got our user added. Whitelist your IP. If you now click on the get started button, to the bottom left of your screen, you should see the next step to take highlighted whitelist your IPA, IP. Click on that. Okay, and I just did some research. Everything, uh, the database, is, it's changed a little bit. So what we want to do now is click network access. This is not reflected in this instructions, but we want to click network access. We want to add an IP address. So whitelist entry. Enter IP address or CIDR. Um, add IP. Allow access from anywhere. In the modal, click the allow access from anywhere button. It's temporary, allow access from anywhere, which should do the pre-filled and then click confirm. So here, and confirm. This is basically making it so that um, we can use allow REPL.IT to have access to our uh, network. Um, so this is not an ideal thing to do for a production application. This is just for practice. Okay, so now you wanna connect, we're going to connect our clusters. Uh, clicking on the green Get Started button on the bottom left of your screen should now show the final step, Connect to your cluster. Click on it. So now we want to just connect to this cluster. And then, so here we're going to click Connect. Connect your application. In the pop-up modal, click Connect your application. Here we have Connect your application. Connect your application. A connection string will be displayed and you can copy that connection string by clipping the copy button. Copy. This will be the final URI you will use to connect your DB and will look something like Mongo plus SRV user password. Mongo plus SRV, there we go, so this is it. already filled up for you, so all you need to do is replace the password field in one of the cre created in the previous step. User and cluster fields are already filled out for you, so all you would need to do is replace the password. So they're just saying that here you could just replace your password and your username. And I'm pretty sure that they've just programmatically done that and hidden it here. So uh, if you see blank screens here, it's because I'm just uh, uh, pasting that out. And that's it, now you have the URI you will add to your application to connect it to your database. Keep this URI safe somewhere so you can use it later. Feel free to create separate databases for different applications. If they need a separate database, you just need to create a new project under your current MongoDB Atlas account, build a new cluster, add a new user, whitelist the IP, and finally connect your cluster to obtain your uh, URI. Okay, so let's go to the first lesson. So what we wanna do now is MongoDB and Mongoose. Install and set up Mongoose. Add MongoDB and Mongoose to your project's package.json. Then require Mongoose. Store your MongoDB Atlas database URI in the private.env file as Mongo URI and surround the URI with single or double quotes to make sure no spaces exist between both the variable and the equals and the value and equal. Okay, so that's 
details that I'll explain when we get there. Connect to the database using the following syntax. So here, your URI, this is what we copied and pasted from here. This is our URI, here we're going to have it again. New user, use new parser, true, and then this, okay. So um, another thing that's, so here we have our REPL.IT. Um, this is something that I just copied from the other uh, thing. So let's see how to get started with this. Add Mongo and Mongoose to your projects package.json, then require Mongoose. Okay, so um, npm Mongoose. We want to how to add Mongoose to the package.json. If you go over here, you can see here they've got, this is how you install this. So npm install Mongoose. So we'll come back over to repl.it and then we're gonna come into the terminal. So we're gonna say npm install uh, mongoose. Um, so yeah, the thing about these lessons now is they're getting kind of advanced and this is where I got totally lost. So I really hope that this is helpful for people um, because they don't really say use npm to install mongoose. So add mongodb and mongoose. So we've got mongoose installing, but now we should get mongodb. And so if you just go to npm.js, you're going to be there. And so here you can see that this was published 20 days ago. Exact match, MongoDB. The official Mongo, MongoDB driver for Node.js. And so you'll actually want to get that from here, but it'll probably be the same installation instructions. Install MongoDB dash dash save. You can also use yarn. We'll just do npm install MongoDB dash dash save. So uh, npm install uh, mongodb dash dash save. <clears throat> okay, and so if we actually look at our package.json, you'll see that now we've got mongodb and mongoose in here. Um, and so that's good. So the next step, now that we've got MongoDB and Mongoose the pro added to the package.json. We want to require Mongoose and store your MongoDB Atlas database URL in the private.env file as Mongo URI. Okay, so over here, it doesn't even look to me like we have a .env file now, so let's save it. So I'm going to go .env. So this is going to be an empty file. And um, so, yeah, again, I just clicked this button right here, which is the files, add file. And so .env as Mongo URI. Um, again, I've got this URI copied, so I'm just going to go Mongo URI and set that equal to something. Now, these env files have their own uh, look, and so this is how you do it. And so I'm going to be commenting this out, but... You won't be able to see this, but this Mongo URI is going to be equal to whatever is here. Okay, so <clears throat> now what we want to do is we need to fix this ENV file up. The way that we actually need to, this needs two things to change. Here, we want to pass it in as a string. So we're surrounding the .env file here. <clears throat> and then what we're also going to do is replace our password. So that's what we set up as the password for the cluster. We're going to replace that here. And then we're also going to replace the database name. So I'm going to make my password my password, which I'm not going to tell here, but you should remember yours from when you set it up. And then if I close this, this is the database name. So if I come over here to the DB name, I'm going to close this out and I'm going to type that, do that in there. And then I'm going to type the password exactly as I spelt it out here. So let's say your password was like pink elephant one, two, three. This is how you would want it to be in there. You would not want to have quotation marks like this. You'd want to actually put the database password that you saved when you set this up. And so that's, that's a really important thing. You want to make sure you get it just exactly right. So I'm going to put my real password in here and then we'll move on to myapp.js. Okay, so from um, as connect to your database using the following syntax. So now what we've got to do is we're going to, we're going to use this con, this guy right here and we're going to connect to the database. Now, your URI, we're not going to use this. We're going to use something from a previous Free Code Camp lesson, right? So if I open the link in the new, what I'm looking for is API and microservices, basic package, 
npm, let's see, is that right? Node and Express, and what I'm looking for is env file. Okay, so here we use the .env file. If you remember this from a long time ago, um, well, you basically you go process.env and then your variable name. So this is the way that you access that. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna come back over to our repl.it project. And so your URI, well, we're going to use the process.env file to get that. And here we've got Mongo URI. And you can see the autofill gives you a sense that we're on the right direction. there. Okay, so that's pretty cool, right? So now we've got, we're feeding in mongoose.connect and our process URI, and then this is the information they give us. So now let's run the application and see how it works. So here you see the NPM is starting the application and we're getting an error. This is uh, pretty regular. So what we wanna do is look at the error. This is the key to, to doing things. You wanna make sure you look at the error. Here we started running the server. Here it said, <clears throat> there was a problem, reference error, mongoose is not defined. Okay, so what does that mean? Um, let's go over here and check out mongoose. At the NPM packages, we know that this is the right one. We've set that up. We use this to install. Okay, sweet. Well, here what's happening is we're saying using Node.js, we need to use require. So let's copy this into here. And the instructions actually told us that. We're going to go back over to our REPL. And here it even says, uh, in the, store it in your URI. And then, but here it says add Mongo DB and Mongoose to the package JSON, then require Mongoose. And so it's kind of tricky because this thing keeps it spacing. But what we need to do is require Mongoose. So we come down here and we go constant require mongoose. And again, the reason that we know this is because we've made a mistake, we've checked, we've read the, uh, the error, and so now we, this is what we need. Um, and you get that from checking the documentation and reading the errors and then researching the problem. So now let's run it again and see how things go. Okay, awesome. This thing just popped up. Um, and so yeah, here we have our H, our URL, and we can check this to see that it's working outside of this application. If we open a new window, we can open it. This is the FCC Mongo challenge. Um, so yeah, this is the URL that we want to enter into this guy. So we put this in there and say, I've completed the challenge. Okay, cool. Now before we go, now we've completed our first challenge, I'm going to sign up and save this under my name. Um, I'm gonna create a new account and uh, that's going to be, I'm gonna do that offline, but you wanna do this and so that you can get a better one. So I'm gonna set up my account off the screen right now, but then we'll uh, catch back up in a second. Okay, I was able to sign in to an old account that I had. Um, as you can see, this is my GitHub username. And now this URL looks a little bit prettier. So if I were to copy this one and run it over to here, um, you'll see that there's remote warn divisor. I'm not sure what that is, but the Ian Robinson or IA Robinson .co is the uh, URL which is functioning now. And so that means that I have control of it and that means that this it's likely to stay persistent. I think that that's a useful thing to do as we go through here because the next few lessons are us just working our way through these, uh, one through whatever of the, of the Mongoose setup. And so we want to make sure that we save our work. So um, once again, I'm going to copy this URL after I've logged in and I've, uh, I've signed in for myself. I'm gonna go to mongosdb, and instead of having it be like this, the remote, uh, the 59.repl, I'm gonna make it mine. And now I'm gonna say completed the challenge. And now we're good to go. Okay, awesome, hope you guys enjoy that one. This one's gonna be the longest one out of all of them, I think, because the rest, they'll start to get a little bit easier. But hope you guys enjoy this one, and we'll see you in the next lesson.